Okay, we need to take the set. We need to get the second derivative of x squared minus 3 raised to the sixth. So the second derivative. So that means we have to take the first derivative and then the second derivative. Now that may look like, okay, I'm just going to use chain rule. You just watch. So I'm going to take use the chain rule because we got to get dy dx first. So that's going to be 6 x squared minus 3 raised to the fifth. So minus 1, 6 comes here for chain rule. Times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. And luckily, this is just a constant, so that goes away. So now I have this 6 times x squared minus 3 to the 5th times 2x. Let's multiply some things together. 6 times 2 is 12. So I'm going to get 12x x squared minus 3 raised to the 5th. Now, I have the 6 times 2 is 12x x squared minus 3 raised to the 5th. Okay. Now we need to take the derivative of that. So, because uh, I got to get the second derivative here. So I need to take the derivative of this whole statement. How do we do that? I have 12x times x squared minus 3 raised to the fifth. I have to use chain rule. So the very, very long approach that I do not encourage you to do is expanding out x minus or x squared minus 3 raised to the fifth, expanding that, multiply that out five times. Don't do that though. But that is a different way. But I don't know anyone that would actually do that. I would use chain rule here. And in order to use chain rule, though, we have to use product rule because we're doing 12x times x squared minus 3 raised to the fifth. Two functions, we have to use product rule. So that is where this problem gets a little bit more complicated than just a chain rule scenario. Now, I have to use product rule. So product rule is the derivative of the first function. So I'm going to use 12. So the derivative of 12x is 12 times the original second function. So x, minus, or x squared minus 3. And then this is raised to the fifth, right? Plus the original first function, so 12x, times the derivative of the second function. So now we have to use chain rule. So this is going to be 5x squared minus 3. 5 minus 1 is 4. Times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. Yeah, <laughs> what looked pretty straightforward and relatively manageable becomes a little bit messy as we go through. And we're not even done yet. From here, I need to multiply all of these terms together, 12 times 5 times 2. So I'm going to do 5 times 2, which is 10. 10 times 12 is 120. And I'm just going to bring this over here. So 12x squared minus 3 raised to the fifth plus... And then also I have, so I have 120, as I just talked about, 12 times 5 times 2. It's 120, 5 times 2 is 10 times 12. I also have x times x. That's x squared times x squared minus 3 raised to the fourth. Still not quite done, though, because I have 12 and 120. Take out 12. I have x squared minus 3, x squared minus 3, this is raised to the 5th, this is raised to the 4th. So I could take out 4 of them. because They both have at least 4 together, so I'm going to take out 4 x squareds minus 3s, and then I'm going to take out a 12 also. So 12, and then I'm taking out an x squared minus 3 raised to the 4th. Then what's left on the inside? Well, since I took 4 of these away from x squared minus 3 to the fifth, since I took four of them, I have one left over, so x squared minus 3. I took out 12 from 120, so 120 divided by 12 is 10, so that's going to be plus 10 x squared. Don't forget about that x squared there. I took out all of these, so x squared minus 3 raised to the fourth, that was completely removed, so then I get this. And we actually do have some like terms. This, I, I, I didn't need to write the uh, parentheses here because this was just raised to the first. So I didn't need that. So let me go ahead and tuck those away so we can. So then I would have x squared plus 10x squared is 11x squared minus 3 
and then I would have, so let's write this out as 12 times x squared minus 3 to the fourth times, uh, what did we say, 1 plus 10 is 11 x squared minus 3. And that was all for the second derivative. <laughs> this all equals the second derivative there. Imagine if we had to take the third derivative. Yeah, no, thank you. So there it is.